how do you solve an expansion with coefficients and exponents in the binomials? First, we need a better method of finding better method of finding a coefficients of large expansions. Factorials. The symbol for factorial is n, n factorial is n exclamation point. Pronounced n. <laughs> The formula for n factorial is n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 2 times 1. And, it, and as an example, 4 factorial equals 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 24. You can also divide factorials. 5 factorial over 4 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 4, 3, 2s, and 1 cancel out, and you just get 5. We know that 1 factorial is 1, but what about 0 factorial? Here's the proof. We know that n factorial over n minus 1 factorial equals n, like the example we just showed you. Therefore, when n equals 1, then 1 factorial over 0 factorial has to equal 1 because 1 factorial is 1, the only thing 1 can be divided by is 1. So therefore, 0 factorial must equal 1. Co since we know the coefficients of the terms of x plus y to the n, or n factorial over n minus i factorial, i factorial, we, when we combine that coefficient maker with the variable maker we described, we get x plus y to the n equals the sum of i equals 0 to n, of n factorial over n minus i factorial, i factorial, x to the n minus i, y to the i. Okay, so that's our original binomial. Then that's our coefficient maker. That's our variable maker. And that's the sum symbol. And our example we're going to use is 3k minus 5 to the fourth, where our x is 3k and our y is negative 5. Now the book doesn't teach it this way. They teach it in one confusing blob of terms. We like to do a term at a time. And since it's i equals 0 to n, we know that the term number should always be 1 greater than the i. So if we have our i goes up to 4, we should have 5 terms. So our first term, i equals 0. Now using the equation, and our n is 4, we get 4 factorial over 4 minus 0 factorial times 0 factorial. And this all boils down to the bottom is 1, so we know that they'll simplify to 1. Then we use a variable maker as we get, we get 3k to the 4th, because our i is 0, so it's 3k to the n, 3k to the 4th times negative 5 to the 0, which is 1. So it's just 3k to the 4th times 1 is 81k to the 4th. 81k to the 4th is our first term. Now, term number 2. Again, 4 factorial times 4 minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial is just 4. Then we substitute our variable maker. n minus 1 is n minus i, or n minus 1 is now 3. So we get 4 times 3k cubed times negative 5 to the 1, because now it's y to the i also. When you multiply those up, you get negative 4 times 27k cubed times 5 equals negative 540k cubed. Term number 3. Our i is now 2. So we get, again, 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And that simplifies to 6 because 4 minus 2 factorial is 2 factorial times 2 factorial. But remember, this coefficient maker can't work all the time because you have the variable maker to take into account and there's a coefficient in a variable. So 6 times 3k squared times negative 5 squared equals 150 times 9k squared equals 1,350k squared. That's our third term. So then, <laughs> so then our term number four, it's the same thing again, four factorial, four minus three factorial times three factorial is four times three k times negative five cubed. And you multiply those out, 12, 
4 times 3 is 12. 12K times negative 125, it's negative 1,500K. And then finally, term number 5. 4 factorial over 4, fac 4 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. They all cancel out, all those 4s, and you get 1. So 3K to the 0, which is also 1. When we're left with negative 5 to the 4th, is 625. And so then we string them all together, and we get 81K to the 4th minus 540K cubed plus 1,350k squared minus 1,500k plus 625. You can see how that would be hard to do with the FOIL method. There is a way of finding a specific term in an expansion. You don't want to write out the whole expansion 25 for 25, or no, that's 26 terms, I think. You don't want to write all that out. You know, we need a shortcut, clearly. And so since the binomial theorem begins with i equals 0 to n, we deduce that the term number is i plus 1. So we know the term is 23 and our i is 22. So knowing that our i is 22, we get 25 factorial, which is our n, times 3 is 25 minus 22, and 22 is our i factorial times negative 2k to the cubed times 3 to the 22nd. And so we'll need to find the coefficients. 25 times 24 times 23 over 3 times 2 is 25 times 24 times 23 over 6. That, to do, that goes down to 23, 2,300 times negative, times negative 8, because you're cubing that, times 3 to the 22nd k cubed. Negative 18,400 times 3 to the 22nd k cubed. And if you do that all out, you get about negative 527 trillion k cubed. So clearly you don't want to do that all out. Now, a last and final thing I'm going to show you are two very similar yet very different problems. First, let's do the easy to estimate one. They both have x to the something. One is ninth, one is tenth. The x term is both x cubed, and they both have the same n. But the y terms have an, a y in the denominator. This is a y in the denominator and an x in the denominator. And this one it would be would, would be easy because it's a whole other because it's a whole other variable which doesn't matter because we're just solving for i, and then our final goal, the x term. Our strategy is to solve for i, and then eventually we'll use i in the binomial theorem to find the whole term. The variable part of the binomial theorem <laughs> is x to the n minus i, y to the i. And our specific x is x cubed. So we know that x cubed to the something has to equal x to the ninth. And that something is going to be n minus i. And so we know the only possibility is 3. So 3 is n minus i, or 6 minus i. So therefore, we know i has to be 3, and the term number is 4. The L is the easy one, which is even complex explaining the easy one. Now, this is practically impossible to estimate. The term with x to the 10th and x cubed minus 2 over x to the 6th. One reason is because x cubed is in a, 3 is in a common factor of 10. So, and also we've got an x in the denominator and the numerator here, so they might start canceling each other out, which would make it confusing. So, if we have the same exact strategy. Solve for i and use i in the binomial theorem to find the whole term. And again, our specific x is x cubed. But all, we also have to take into account a specific y is negative 2 over x. And so we have the same thing, only we're setting it equal to x to the 10th. And we have to substitute our values in, x and y values, and x, n equals 6. And we get x cubed to the 6 minus i times negative 2 over x to the i equals x to the 10th. And signs and coefficients don't matter in this. I'm solving for i. Negative 2 over x could be 
1 over x, because we're ridding, getting rid of the signs and the coefficients. And so using the power rule of exponents, which is where you multiply them, when you raise an exponent to a power, you multiply them. You get x to the 18th minus 3i times 1 over x to the i equals x to the 10th. Since a to the a to the n over b to the n a to over b to the n equals a to the n over b to the n, one over x to the i over x in parentheses to the i could be one over x to the i, and so we get x to the eighteen minus eighteen minus three i over x to the i equals x to the tenth. The quotient rule states that a to the n over a to the m equals a to the n minus m. Therefore, we then get uh, x to the 18 minus 4i equals x to the 10th. Now, using common logic, we can deduce that a to the x equals a to the i. We can drop the bases because they're the same and get x to the i. But there's another proof involving logarithms that I'm not going to explain now. So we get 18 minus 4i equals 10, because we're dropping all the bases. And that's basic algebra from here, minus 18 on both sides. Negative 4i is negative 8. Divide by negative 4, i equals 2. Dun, dun, dun. All right, um, we're going to test i equals 2. x to the 6 minus 2, because 6 is our n, and minus i, 6 minus 2, y to the 2, or y to the i, equals x cubed to the 4th, because that's an x, times negative 2 over x squared, equals x to the 12th times 4 over x squared, equals 4x to the 10th. And so we, we, we can, we've proved it, that it's the third term. Thanks for coming. Mm. They put one four. It's if it's spelled backwards, it gets pi. So you put one four. If it's spelled backward, it gets pi. <laughs> <laughs>